lecture two of the introduction to bit badges course. In this lecture, we will focus on how bit badges is multi-chain, how it makes it feasible, and what are the benefits to using bit badges as opposed to you know individual ecosystems. So, again, our goal is to um, build, help you build multi-chain applications with a single unified interface. So, users from any chain can use our tools, and it's all the same tool, same service. Um, and it's pretty much all in one place, it's the hub. So how do we do this? So the four kind of ecosystems that we support right now are Ethereum, Cosmos, Solana, and Bitcoin. Um, these are just the four that we support right now, but it, our uh, infrastructure is built in a way that we can support any new chain or anything that pops up in the future, and we'll eventually add more over time. If you have a recommendation for any more chains to add, let us know. Um, and you might may have noticed that you know Ethereum is an ecosystem, or Cosmos is an ecosystem, Solana is an ecosystem rather than you know a specific chain. There might be other chains within the ecosystem. For example, on Ethereum, you have Base, Optimism, um, all the L2s, Layer 2s. For Cosmos, there's a ton of chains. Solana, there's um, the main end, I believe, some other L2s, and then Bitcoin. You know. um, with our infrastructure, we really make no difference. Um, we don't treat any individual chain differently. It's kind of just the ecosystem as a whole, because all, all we really care about is the signature algorithm, which we'll get into in the future uh, slides. So the first step in how we achieve this multi-chain um, infrastructure is via mapped addresses. So as you can see on the right, a this Solana address has an equivalent address on all different supported chains. So you can see the Solana address starting with 6H2, maps to the Cosmos 18EL address, and also the BC1Q, um, and also the Ethereum OX3E7. So there is a deterministic algorithm for you know, converting them between the addresses, but I just want to note that everything has an equivalent on every other supported chain. Um, and you might think of a the user's kind of native address as the one that they're familiar with, the one that they expect to be kind of interacting as. Um, so in this case, it would be the Solana address. And then um, their mapped address is kind of just their an address that is mapped behind the scenes. So, for example, the Cosmos address for them. Um, so, yeah, I would just want to note the difference between native and mapped. These are terms that you might hear in the future. Native is kind of just what they what we sh you should display to the end user. And then behind the scenes, really, you can use any any mapped address. So, we typically use the Cosmos address as a you know base address when you need a consistent interface in uh, most places. So, but really you can use, you know, if you are ma mainly Ethereum dom dominant, you can use Ethereum addresses as the base and so on, because they all just have, you convert them as needed. So an example, um, as you see here, this is one of our balance maps that we host off chain. This is a, a neat feature of the token standard. We'll get into that into, in the sec second course. But as you can see, we have a Ethereum user, um, actually two Ethereum users, and a Solana user who own times one of this uh, this badge that we're um, highlighting. However, in and this in the interface, they're displayed as the Ethereum or Solana user because those are like the native addresses of the users. However, in our balance map behind the scenes, we convert everything to the equivalent um, Cosmos address, and that's kind of how we store. Everything and this kind of cre this creates a consistent interface that you know we can use behind the scenes and it treats it all kind of the same. So there's no um, collisions in terms of you know if a Ethereum address maps to a Cosmos address and we use both as a key, if we double, um, it's the same thing but double keys. We just just map everything to a Cosmos address for consistency and a consistent interface. So how do you convert? Um, you can, I mean, in the site, as you see here, you can simply highlight over an address and a tooltip will show up and you can copy and copy the uh, mapped address. But if you want to do it more programmatically, you can use the SDK or API, as you see here. Um, well, I guess it's a little cut off, but the bitbadges.js-sdk is the name of the NPM package. And yeah, um, one thing I want to note with conversions is that Solana addresses and maybe some in the future might be or are one way only due to just the way that the addresses are derived because of hashes and you can't undo a hash. 
Um, so as you see on the left, a Solana address can be converted to any other address, um, but an Ethereum address cannot be converted to a Solana address without you know, knowing the Solana address in advance. So you can do the Solana to any other address conversion, however, you cannot do the uh, vice versa. Um, and it's just a limitation with how uh, Solana addresses are derived versus the others. So it's just something we, as developers, have to deal with. So part one of supporting multi-chain um, is via mapping these addresses and making it consistent and um, easy to use. But the second part is how do we actually, you know, verify stuff on chain? How do we support signatures and so on? So we, I use the term signature compatibility, which is basically we support verifying signatures from any existing wallet. So we do not have our own wallet. We support, you know, any, all the existing wallets from MetaMask to, you know, anything on any chain, Phantom, um, Kepler, on Cosmos and so on. And pretty much on our chain, we, um, we verify the signatures for the transactions using the supported signature algorithm. So, for example, if you sign in with MetaMask, we'll check on the chain that you um, will verify with the MetaMask signature algorithm, and so on. So, the yes, we are multi-chain, but we are not interoperable. So, again, I use the term signature compatibility. Everything is kind of scoped to the BitBadges blockchain. And we verify transactions as needed through any supported wallet. However, however it is a hub or um, it's kind of all in one place. We're scoped and we're not pulling data from any other blockchain. We're not interacting with any, uh, any other blockchain. It's kind of, that's kind of how we achieve our multi-chain. The notion of being multi-chain, um, just that everything's in one place and we support everything there for users from any chain through, you know, verifying signatures from any chain. So again, you can treat it like a hub um, as opposed to a super interoperable system.